Hello lovelies and welcome to another episode here on my YouTube channel. Uh, I did end up skipping a week or so, I believe, when I put this out. I'm going to try and stick to Sundays right now. I know it said Fridays, but Sunday seems to be a good time. So I think I might wait to put this video out till Sunday. Um, but I wanted to do a process video and talk about my experience on my first collaborative piece with my husband. Um, so I kind of walked through some steps on this video that I don't normally end up sharing. Um, I got a new camera, which made it really easy to focus and kind of share those details. Um, so if you want, I have other videos that I might try and link down below uh, based off of like my prep. But I always start a painting out with the line drawing. So I get the drawing done on a piece of paper, then I transfer it to my wood panel and then I gesso it. So that was the step that was just passed there. Then obviously I will take the time to clean my station. I am notorious for leaving my station a mess and it sucks because I can't create. So I, I have to get into better habits of cleaning my mess up because then I don't paint in my studio and I start doing my art in the living room, which drives Josh crazy. So I really need to try and have better uh, organization skills in my studio. I also want to try and figure out how to be more ergonomically correct because my back hurts a lot when I work in my studio. So I need to figure out what, what I need to do. But um, yeah, it's always really important for me to clean my area when I work. I cannot work in a mess. It just, it just drives me crazy. So I just end up leaving my studio a mess and going to the living room and making that a mess. So those are awful habits that I have that I really need to work on making better because I feel like I, I work better in my studio and I make the rest of the house a mess when I don't because then the cats get in there. There There's uh, my old cat Greg would step purposefully would step in my paint as soon as she saw it and then there's still marks everywhere from her. So I always start out with a clean palette and this is how I set up my palette. So I start off with a titanium white. Uh, I'll, I've said it in several videos, I'm gonna make a, a separate videos just based off of my, um, off of Gamblin oil paint because they're my favorite. But I start off with uh, white, that's Alizarian Crimson. I think I use a few reds on this, but I always basically start out, start out with the primary colors. And um, the one thing to keep in mind is that there's different there's different variations. So this one's cadmium. That one's gonna be. Um, I, I mean, you you can see it in the screen, but it's just it's different. This one, one of them is more like a blood red. The other one's just a very bright red. They're gonna come out with different colors. You need both of them. Um, I believe that one. That one's a Hansa yellow. That one's super important. <laughs> It's what I would probably call the most truest yellow in my opinion. Um, I believe there's also a cadmium yellow, but I like Hansa because it, it gives you brighter colors. Um, but this is how I set up. I'm, uh, you know, my husband Josh does it different. The, this is how I start my, um, that one's cadmium. This is how I always start every single palette without fail. Uh, this is the same, it's a routine I have. I start off with the same, I think like six or so colors or maybe like eight, but it's like, and that one's my favorite. Indian yellow is my favorite yellow. Um, it has, it, it reads almost like an orange, but it's very warm and I paint, like you can see it there, it's almost close to the red, but what it ends up being is just a very deep yellow. Um, phthalo blue, really important, especially if you want to create teals. Phthalo blue is a must have. You have to have phthalo blue in order to create teal colors. You're not going to be able to create it otherwise. Um, I might do these really short color mixing videos. Let me know how you feel about that. Um, this one, ultramarine blue, that's going to be your truest blue. So um, that one's just like your standard blue you would see as, you know, ever since you're little, that's going to be the standard one. Um, 
sorry my allergies are killing me right now uh, but this is again this is how I start every single palette without fail I personally don't like using skin tone colors uh, that's just how I, I took a color mixing class at the junior college here in Santa Rosa when I was like 19 and um, that's just how uh, the teacher and that class taught how to color mix and her she was super strict where you had to create your own blacks and your own browns but basically you would never start off with something pre-mixed you would start off with just the standard colors um, so I do that as often as I can I like being in control of how the pigment looks um, I would still, I mean, when I paint in gouache, I still use uh, the skin tone colors. It just, I, I find it to be difficult to get the exact colors that I want. So what I shared was just um, the, the jar that I use for my mineral spirits. And it's got a, um, like a coil in, on the inside. This is a number four Raphael brush. I like the synthetic brushes because the hard bristle ones, I, I think I need to use them more often, the natural, like I think they're boars, boars hair or something like that. But I like the synthetic ones because they blend more seamlessly. And for me, it's harder, it's easier to take care of. That's garbage, guys. Um, garbage. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So I, I like the synthetic brushes best, um, just because I've, I, you know, I use them both for different, air, for different things, but when I, when it comes to skin tone, I like them because you're able to blend really easily with them. And, uh, I feel like it takes the app, the paint application a little bit better. The boar set is going to give you more of, or the natural brushes are going to be really good for texture and for... Put, I think filling in like larger areas in my opinion. They're stiffer, they're a stiffer brush. Um, and I feel like you have to take care of them a little bit, a little bit better than the synthetic in my opinion. Um, and uh, so that the coil jar that I use for my mineral spirits, I really like because you end up being able to clean your brush really well with it. Uh, the one downside I would say is that it gets dirty really easy, so you have to clean them out a good amount. For you. Does anyone else have like a very loud, very vocal cat? So I've had garbage for maybe five months or so. Um, he was really skittish when I first got him, and then he not like he got very comfortable. But I've never had, like, I had my other cat, Greg, for a few months, and then she got hit by a car, car unfortunately. Um, but I haven't had, like, cats for even, I would, total, I wouldn't, I haven't even had a cat for a total of a year. And they're completely different people. Garbage is super vocal. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> I feel like he's always trying to communicate with me. I feel like he's always trying to communicate with me and I just don't know what he wants. He's always meowing at me really loud. Um, if you're a cat person, comment down below. Let me know what my what my cat wants from me. I'm more of a dog person, but but Garbage is awesome. He's an all black cat. He's really cool. Um, so let's move on to the concept of this being a collaborative piece. So I met my husband, uh, Joshua Lawyer, eight years ago, and um, I met him at an art gallery in San Francisco. Uh, but in all this in the eight years that we've known each other, we've never collaborated on a piece. So he got commissioned to do this piece uh, and collaborate as a collaborative piece. They, they specifically wanted him and I to work together on a piece. And we shot the reference for this, and um, uh, it was the first time that I had shot two models together. And I mean, to be completely honest, this was a really challenging piece for me. I don't know if it was just I, I, I was really busy with other stuff, and um, I wasn't too excited to get started on this piece. And that's never a good place to be with artwork, but. 
ultimately at the end i was pretty happy with it but i i struggled the entire way and since it was a collaborative piece um i think that josh also had uh some opinions about we always kind of go back and forth with artwork but i think that i just got in my head for this piece so i kept on struggling the entire time so i kind of for whatever reason, I, this is something that happens a lot, but with every painting, I kind of end up doubting myself and thinking that I just forgot how to paint. I don't know what it is, but every single painting, there's um, right when I begin, I think, like for the first several hours and like the first kind of pass, very rarely do I feel confident in that piece. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And I've been painting for... I don't, 16 17 years and doing art ever since I can remember but uh for whatever reason I don't know I don't know if, I've heard other artists that feel similarly but I just always feel like I don't know what I'm doing at the start of every painting this painting I felt like that the entire time like I feel like I had just forgotten how to paint and I struggled the entire time up until the very, very, very last little bit. But it was very difficult for me to get through this painting, um, especially because it was, again, a collaborative piece. So yeah, I struggled a lot for this piece. It was definitely interesting doing our first collaborative piece in eight years. And coincidentally, for whatever reason, we've been commissioned for quite a few other other collaborative pieces there's another joint commission that we just got commissioned for um we've also been working on a lot of mural stuff together where we for the eight years we've we've known each other have not had to work together now we've had to definitely learn how to work together what do you think is good um i think that we you know he has strengths that i don't and i have strengths that he doesn't so it works out really well um <coughs> This one, like I said, was a very difficult piece. I, I, there was something about the expression that I couldn't capture that was really hard. And um, I think that one thing that I learned kind of going away from this painting is no matter how much work you've put into a drawing, if the original, if the, if the, if the preliminary drawing of the painting, you're not feeling good about or confident about just start over because I th I think that if I had done that I would have saved myself time in the long run because I ended up repainting and painting over parts that were frustrating me so I think that's one of the biggest takes away from the takeaways from this is if you are doing a piece and it's just not quite working out for you if you are because you know to be honest with you I didn't feel confident with this piece since the very beginning when I j just done the, done the drawing. The drawing looked a little off. So if I had been smart, I would have just erased that and then started over. That would have been the correct way to move forward. Um, but I, even at this point, every painting is still a learning experience. And, you know, I'm happy to... to to be able to collaborate with my husband as, as well. That's something that we had never done before and we got the opportunity to do it. We also, the other thing that was cool is that we got a really, um, a really awesome client where she didn't rush us. So we took several months to get this piece done because we were so busy. Um, and she didn't have a theme. She let us do and it's very similar to the commission we have now it's the exact same situation where there's no theme and that we're free to do whatever we want they just literally want us to collaborate um so that's been interesting we'll see how this next one comes out hopefully i don't struggle as much as this one and uh yeah if you guys liked this video please don't forget to like and subscribe don't get murdered okay 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 bye
See, I got the eyes for you I go and die for you That's not an over-exaggeration I'm just addicted to salivating over you Yeah, you're my vice The only thing that I can get away with eating twice So I'm gonna let it drip, 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 drip down Sherry, I'm 
more than lightly falling short in your garden A hundred times this Adam couldn't even go in your garden I got up on your lilies, leaping on the edge of your leaves I leave tomorrow for a show, I know my negligent thesis Of how we grow and go together Or oh, whatever, I may never find another That console my soul whenever I need it I bleed it blue in the riches of all your righteousness I dismiss the idol that lives in me when I'm writing this is you All I need is just a little time to get it right All I need is just a little time to get it right All I need is just a little time to get it right All I need is just a little time to get it right All I need, 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 all I